Good morning, Deacon Nick here, on the 22nd week of Ordinary Time, Thursday. Uh, we celebrate today the Feast of St. Gregory the Great, the first of the Gregory Popes. Uh, he is noted, among, for among other things, for sending the first missionaries to England, ultimately leading to his conversion. He's also noted for, noted for his prolific writings and instructions during his papacy, and they earned him the title Doctor of the Church. Among his commentaries on Scripture, perhaps his best known is that on Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Paul tells us, The wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. Gregory comments, If the work of God could be comprehended by reason, it would no longer be wonderful, and faith would have no merit if reason provided sole proof. He continues, we make idols of our concepts, but wisdom is born of wonder. Paul and Gregory agree that the wisdom to be sought after is wisdom of God, wisdom of love, wisdom of virtue, not wisdom of the world. I mean, how do we gain wisdom of God? A wisdom of love while living in a world steeped in animal instinct, survival of the fittest, and self-preservation. Those seeking and finding earthly wisdom, have, having earthly savvy, are those who seemingly lack no earthly treasures. Those lacking in earthly wisdom lack the means to survive. In the extreme are those unemployed, without shelter, and destitute. It seems the world would divide us, one foot firmly planted in cardinal sin, while the other firmly planted in cardinal virtue, each end of the spectrum isolated from the other, the haves and the have-nots. The world most often measures success on a socioeconomic scale. The psalmist spiritually breaks down this wall of worldly division. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. We are, in fact, possessions of God. It is God, it is love, that breaks down worldly divisions and makes discovering God's wisdom possible for rich and poor alike. Gregory writes, The only true riches are those that make us rich in virtue. Therefore, if you want to be rich, beloved, love true riches. If you aspire to the heights of real honor, strive to reach the kingdom of heaven. If you value rank and renown, hasten to be enrolled in the heavenly court of the angels. Gregory and Paul, like then, taught that whether rich or poor in earthly wisdom, seek virtue in your dealings with your neighbor. Seek to love your neighbor as yourself. The church, the church teaches that in this endeavor to discover love, Scripture provides a compass for rich and poor alike love being true north. Gregory says of it, the Holy Bible is like a mirror before our mind's eye. In it we see our inner face. In the scriptures we can learn our spiritual deformities and beauties. And there too we discover the progress we are making and how far we are from perfection, from unconditional love. In our gospel today, Jesus speaks with the wisdom of God who will soon feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Put out to the deep and lower your nets for a catch. Peter speaks to Jesus from the wisdom of the professional fisherman, yet he recognizes the power of God. Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. It is then that Peter comes face to face with the power of God, comes to understand his inner need for God's wisdom, for knowledge of God's capacity to love, to forgive, to show mercy. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And the knowledge of a fisherman transforms, transforms into the love of a disciple, the love of an apostle, who now will carry the keys of the fisherman. 
Peter and the disciples left everything and followed him. Have we done that? Can we do that? We too are called to leave the wisdom of the world behind, not abandoning our gifts and talents received from God, but repurposing them to align with the wisdom of God and the task of love. The psalmist calls out to us, He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain, he shall enter the gates of the kingdom. We perhaps find ourselves wondering how this is possible for us. We cry out with Peter, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Gregory reaches out from the past and advises us, Have confidence in the compassion of our Creator. Reflect well on what you are doing now and keep before you the things you have done. Lift up your eyes to the overflowing compassion of heaven. And while he waits for you, draw near in tears to our merciful judge, having before your mind that he is a just judge. Do not take your sins lightly, and having also in mind that he is compassionate, do not despair. The God-man gives man confidence before God. Let us then always seek and yet wonder at the wisdom of God, the wisdom of love, the wisdom of virtue that makes even our salvation possible. Have a glorious and wonderful week. Take care and God bless you. Amen.